going to take a look at the sampling distribution of p hats, uh, the predicted uh, proportion for something of some population. So uh, one thing to note here is that we've talked about the sampling distribution, what a sampling distribution is, and that's the distribution of a certain statistic uh, for a certain population taken out of a size sample size n. So if we were able to take all um, samples of size n from a population and calculate all of the different p hats we would get from that population, this is how those would be distributed. We call that the sampling distribution. Um, now a couple things to know about this is that since p hat is an unbiased estimator, the mean of all of these p hats is just a true proportion mean. So what that means is, is if these are all of the p hats that we could get uh, in our sampling distribution, it's centered right at the true parameter p. Now there's going to be some variability around that, which is natural because with certain uh, with taking samples, you're going to get a little variability. And uh, we've seen that greater sample sizes uh, reduce the variability. And so the standard deviation of p hat is the square root of p times 1 minus p over n. So using this formula, we can see that by increasing the sample size n, we're dividing by a larger number and therefore reducing the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Now there's two important rules of thumb to know whenever we're going to be using a sampling distribution of p hat. One of them is that we can only really use this as long as the population is sufficiently large. Um, in general, we say that capital N, the population, would have to be at least 10 times the sample, so greater than or equal to 10 times our sample size. That's rule of thumb number one. Rule of thumb number two states that we can use the normal approximation, a normal curve, if we know that n times p is greater than or equal to 10, or in other words, that we have at least uh, 10 successes, and that n1 minus p is also greater than or equal to 10, that we have at least 10 failures. As long as these conditions are satisfied, we can safely use this formula for standard deviation, and we can safely use the normal distribution to make certain calculations. So let's take a look at an example uh, involving a sampling distribution of p hat. All right, so here's my first question. Let's suppose here, and now normally we won't actually know the true parameter, but let's suppose that we know that it's 25% of GHS students that own a TI-84. My question is, what is the probability that a sample of 100 will have less than a 0.2 proportion that own a TI-84? Well, the first thing that we need to do is check a couple of conditions and make sure that we can actually use our normal curve. Um, so the first thing is to note that n is greater than or equal to 10n. So we're taking a sample of 100, so essentially GHS needs to have at least 1,000 students to be able to do this, and it does. We have about 1,450 or so. So that condition is met. Uh, we also need to be able to check that NP is greater than or equal to 10, that we have at least um, 10 successes. Well, if N is 100 and our proportion is 0.25, well, that's 25, so that meets it. And n times 1 minus p also needs to be greater than or equal to 10. So our sample size is 100 times 0.75, and that's 75. So we have at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures. Um, so we can use the normal approximation, and we can use the formula for standard deviation. Knowing that we're able to do that, let's go ahead and sketch a curve. So here we have the distribution of p hat. And that's going to be centered at 0.25 since that's going to be centered at the true uh, parameter. Now we want to know what's the probability that a sample of 100 will have less than 0.2 proportion. So somewhere over here we would have a boundary of 0.2 and this distribution is all the possible p hats we would get from taking samples of 100. Somewhere over here we have 0.2 and somewhere to the left of that those are all sample proportions less than 0.2. So we want to know what's the area under this curve. And to be able to find that, we need to know what our distribution is. Well, this is going to be normal, since we checked that NP is greater than 10, and N1 minus P is greater than 10. So we need to know what the um, two, we need to know what the mean and standard deviation are. 
So the mean of all these p hats is 0.25 is where it's centered. The standard deviation, we're going to use our formula for sigma, that is the square root of p, which is 0.25, times 1 minus p, 0.75, over n, which is 100. And that has a standard deviation of 0 0.04. Uh, let's keep going. 0.433. So knowing our mean and standard deviation, and knowing what part of the curve we're looking for, all we need to do is kind of punch this in uh, and find that area. So we're looking for this area to the left, and that'll be the probability that we have a sample of 100 with less than that proportion owning a TI-84. And that area here is going to be 0 0.0196. So the probability that we take a sample of 100 having less than 0.2 proportion owning a TI-84 is 0 0.0196. So the things that we had to do to calculate this and the things we had to show were number one, our conditions that the population was sufficiently large. Um, also we needed to show that NP was greater than 10 and N1 minus P was greater than 10. That allowed us to use this formula for standard deviation and to be able to use the normal curve. So once we had that we had to calculate um, our standard deviation. We had to use our mean of P hat which we were given as just p, point, uh, point 0.25. Uh, sketch the curve, put our boundary on there, and calculate what that area is. And that's in general uh, the type of problem you might see about using a sampling distribution for p hat.